Hello again. Welcome to the Corporate Finance video series. The topic today is the weighted average cost of capital. My name is Augustin Entonu. I'm a consultant analyst with the Private Wealth Fund and the program director for the MSc Finance Program at London School of Business and Finance. I hope you're enjoying this video so far. The weighted average cost of capital. Let's look at the name. Weighted average cost of capital. Before we begin, Benjamin Franklin says, if you will know the value of money, go and borrow some. I say, the answer is in the name, weighted average cost of capital. How many components of capital do we have in our capital structure? We could have debt, equity, two, it could be bank loan, maybe three, maybe preference shares, that's four. We have four, if we have four, then that means we need to take a weight of the cost of each of these capital. How do we do it? Let's look at the question first. To find the optimal mix of debt and equity, because there are theories that say there's an optimal mix of debt and equity, and that's the Modigliani and Miller, M and M. We need to calculate the costs of these sources of finance. So the sources of finance could be equity, it could be debt. Is the shareholder wealth being created with the proposed mix, or is the shareholder wealth being destroyed? That's the key question. Have you determined the cost before proceeding? In investment appraisal, we use the cost of capital to discount cash flows in order to decide if we're gonna invest in a project or not. And the time value of money, we use an interest rate. That is the cost. But when we have our capital structure in a pool, how do we determine the cost? That is the question with the weighted average cost of capital. Our outcomes, again, broken into two for ease of learning. We have the understanding. For the understanding, we aim to understand how to calculate a company's cost of capital, or what we call the WAC. For insight, we aim to be able to apply this in management decisions. So, there's a graphic here that will come up to explain in a conceptual view. It says that a picture tells the story of a thousand words. Let's imagine that this tank we have here is the company's pool of funds its capital structure. The capital structure can be made of debt and equity. So we look at this capital structure. Let's start filling it up. We have equity capital flowing in. We have debt capital. Then let's flow them in. Equity flows into the, the drum, or what we call the capital structure here. Debt flows in. Equity comes in at the, at the cost of debt. Uh, sorry, equity comes in at the cost of equity and debt comes in at the cost of equity, uh, at the cost of debt. These are two different costs. Equity, most of the time, is more expensive than debt for two reasons. Equity is perceived to be highly risky compared to debt because if a company liquidate, goes into liquidation, debt providers are first of all settled before equity providers. Also, debt is cheaper than equity because debt is tax efficient. Interests are paid before tax, so there are tax savings. If we're going to invest in a project, that is our investment projects, like we've seen in our investment appraisal, we need to let out these funds to go out. Those funds then have to be costed. How do we do that? We use the concept of the weighted average cost of capital. So let's start with equity capital. Cost of equity, also known as KE. That is the AKA, also known as. We can use two methods to cost equity capital. We can use the dividend growth model, or we can use the capital asset pricing model. For the dividend growth model, the formula is cost of equity, KE, is equals to V0, that's the dividend in year zero, into one plus G, that is one plus growth, divided by PO, that's the share price, X div plus growth. While for the capital asset pricing model, we say that cost of equity, KE, is equals to RF plus beta into RM minus RF. How does this work? We have an example here to illustrate. Mesterano Limited paid a dividend of 6p per share eight years ago, and the current dividend is 11p. The current share price is £2.58 xdiv. Required. Calculate the cost of equity for Mesterano. Remember when we did the time value of money, we valued the equity as a perpetuity. Well, we can use that formula also to calculate the cost of equity. We have growth. How do we estimate growth? We estimate growth by saying dividend in year zero divided by dividend n years ago, raised to the power 1 over n minus 1. It's called the average method. If we do that, we have a growth of 7.8%.
applying that and then inputting it into our formula. Now we have all the variables we need. We have KE equals to D naught, that's dividend in year zero, into one plus G, that is D1, divided by PO plus G. That gives us 0.11 times 1.078, that is the growth, 1.078, or rather one plus G, divided by the share price of 2.58 plus the growth, and that gives us a cost of equity of 12.4%. We then use the second method using the CAPM, the Capital Asset Pricing Model. We have an illustration here. The market return is 15%. Cool Limited has a beta of 1.2 and the risk-free rate is 8%. Required, calculate what is the cost of uh, capital. The formula for cost of capital is KE equals to RF plus beta into expected return from the market minus risk-free rate. We have all the formula given to us. We have the variables given to us. RF, the risk-free rate, which is the risk-free rate on government bonds, sovereign bonds, is 8%. Beta is 1.2. 15% minus 8% gives us 7%. Times 1.2 plus 8% gives us a cost of equity of 16.4%. Let's review what we've done again. We have equity capital, debt capital, uh, irredeemable debt, redeemable debt, and bank loan, different types. We have equity flowing into the drum, debt of different types flowing into the drum, and we have our projects and we need to cost our projects using the work. Now we're coming to look at debt capital. For debt capital, let's first of all look at irredeemable debt. The 10% irredeemable loan notes of Zara PLC, Zora PLC, quoted at 120x int. Corporation tax is payable at 30% required. What is our cost of debt, net of tax, cost of debt? We then state a formula. Cost of debt, KD, of irredeemable debt ID is equals to one into one minus tax divided by the debt market value. We give the one minus T because of the tax efficiency of debt. We pay interest on debt before we pay tax. Applying that formula, we have 10, which is the coupon of 10% times per value of 100, not 120, watch that part, divided by the market value of the debt of 120 and that gives us a cost of debt of 5.83%. We we'll then move on to look at the redeemable debt. This is a little bit more tricky. We handle it in a formula manner. We use some formats. One Unlimited has 10% loan notes quoted at $102 X interest. It's redeemable in five years' time at par, and corporation tax is paid at 30%. Remember when we did the internal rate of return, I told you we're going to have a similar method. Yet it's here now. But also when we did the time value of money, we said that the present value of anything, well, any security, is the discounted cash flow to today. So what is the present value of this? We look at this and we say, what is the net of tax cost of debt? We have seven columns there. We have the year, the description, the cash flow, the first discount factor, which is the 10%. Uh, the present value using the first discount factor, which we call the PV1. The second discount factor, which will come after we've done the first calculation. And the second present value. So we start the first column, year. We have year zero, which is now identifying our time value. We have year zero, year one to five, and we have a final year four, rather. Five. We have the market value. We have interest up to year five. And we have the redemption value at par in year five. When we discount them using the first discount factor of 10%, and we sum up the part on the PV1, we have a negative net present value. That means that we've not reached our IRR yet. The IRR is the cost of redeemable debt. So we try a second value. We divide by two because we've got a negative value. So we use the discount factor of 5%. We discount them, and we have our cash flows, and we get a positive value for present value. When we apply this and say KD of redeemable debt, that is KD of RD, is equal to the internal rate of return. The formula is the lower rate plus the MPV positive value divided by MPV negative value, positive value, sorry, minus MPV negative value times the high rate minus the lower rate. The high rate is 10%, the lower rate is 5%. When we apply that into the formula, we have 6.67%. Moving on, we then try to explain what we've done. The approach is to use a seven-column approach, identify the cash flows, which we do in column two, three, and four. 
we first of all discount with two rates for negative present value. If we have a negative present value, we divide the first discount rate by two. If we have a positive present value, we multiply the first discount rate by two. Then we use the IR formula as it was given to us. Then we apply interpolation. The last cost of debt we're looking at is the cost of bank loan. For the cost of bank loan, we have an example. Trari has a loan from a bank of 12% per annum. Corporation tax is charged at 30%. What is the cost of debt? This is the most easiest. Well, bank loans don't have a market value. It's simply 1 into i into 1 minus t. And in this case, it's 12% into 0.7. And that gives us 8.4%. Having done all this, then we can then look at the weighted average cost of capital. Again, we have our capital structure. We have equity flowing in. And we have debt flowing in at different costs. And we need to issue this at a weighted average cost. Issuing it at a weighted average cost, we have an example. Barrows PLC has 20 million ordinary shares, quoted at three pounds. And the eight million of loan notes quoted at 85, at a discount. The cost of equity has already been calculated at 15%, it's given to us. And the cost of debt has been calculated at net of tax of 7.6%. If we were not giving, we have the variables and we can calculate them. Required. Calculate the weighted average cost of capital. Again, we have columns. So we have four columns. We have the capital component, the market value of the capital component, which is V, the cost of capital component, which is K, the value of the capital component multiplied by the cost of capital component, which is VK. So start with the capital component. We have equity, 20 million shares at three pounds. That gives us 60 million pounds. For debt, we have debt trading at 85, but has a power value of 100. So it's trading at a discount of 15%. So we have 85 divided by 100 times 8 million, and that gives us 6.8 million. We sum that up and we have 66,800,000. For cost of capital component, we're given cost of equity capital is 15%. Cost of debt capital is 7.6%. Then we move to the third column, or the fourth column in this case, and we have the VK. When we multiply 60 million by 15%, we have 9 million. And when we multiply 6.8 million by 7.6%, we have 516,800,000. ,000. We sum that up, that gives us 9,516,800,000. Well, the formula for weighted average cost of capital is the summation of VK, the fourth column, divided by summation V, the second column. If we apply that, that is simply 9,516,800,000 divided by 66,800,000. And that gives us a weighted average cost of capital of 14.26%. Why is it a weighted average cost of capital? It is the weight considering the components of capital we've used. In this case, we used equity and debt with differing cost. Equity costs 15%, debt costs 7.6%. We need to bring in the weights. That sums it up. We have our capital structure, we have equity, we have debt flowing in at a varying cost because equity comes in at its own cost while debt comes in at, at its own cost. And we need to issue this to a project using the weighted average cost of capital, which is the real cost of capital. Have a read of this. Look at the case study. Consider the Shell PLC project that you are investing in. Have a read on it. View my MBA and get back to us. So we have equity capital, debt capital, and that, when we take them into consideration and calculate the costs each of them have, use them to reflect on the components, we then have the weighted average cost of capital. Thank you very much for your time.